Welcome to Totally Awesome Fishing Films, where we've had some queries lately about pike fishing. Hmm, that's right. Which is the better bait? Herring, mackerel, sardines, smell, sprats, 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 sprats. Stop it, Graham, stop it, just stop it. Sorry about that, but I do like sprats. So, yes, folks, it's another battle of the baits. This time, it is sardines in one corner, sprats in the other. Let's see how we got on. Okay, people, just before we get down to the riverbank, we better show you these two species of fish that are going head to head. Sprats and sardines, there they are. Fresh out of the supermarket. I only buy supermarket ones, I don't buy those pre-packed ones you can buy. And there we go, sardines, much bigger. Now, just a little tip here, people. If you look at the sprat here, it's just about bite size, whereas the sardines are a lot bigger. Now, people say these break up. If you get them packed individually and freeze them individually, and you don't bust the bottom here, the soft guts, I find they're okay. I'm not long distance casting with them. I'm casting up to 20 yards, that's the maximum. But I like them because, if you can see that, they're what we call laterally compressed. They're very narrow this way. So when they sink, they flutter like this through the water, whereas, Monsieur Le Sardine is fairly chunky across the back. He's the sort of rugby fullback of the fishing world, I suppose. He's also heavier, denser, thicker, and a lot softer, and will cast off the hook if you don't hook it on right. So I'm using the same VB hook I use, single at the front, but I space the second hook a little bit further back to the back. So there's the two baits, obviously different sizes as well. So you'd think this would get the bigger fish being the bigger bait, not necessarily, but I'll tell you what this is good for, ledgering dead on the bottom. So we're gonna go head to head with these two. Let's get down the river. We got all the bait. Oh, man, do they smell. I think we better get them in the fridge quick. Get down the river and see who's gonna win the battle out of these two. Right guys, we're here on a Dorset start. It's 20 past 11. We've been here probably only about half an hour. Uh, my first ever time pike fishing. We're using the deadly twitching sprats method, and I got myself my first pike. Just under this overhang here, to my left, twitching, slowly twitching. I, bear in mind, I have no idea what a pike take is like. Uh, I was just going by what Dad says, um, and how you feel a bump on the line, opened up the bay alarm, gave it five or six seconds. Oh, one for the sardine. The sardine's coming back strong. 2-1 down at the moment. We've only been here 15 minutes. Not a big fish. He grabbed that sardine absolutely right by the side of the margins. Oh, he's going okay for small fish though. See now, downside of fishing with the, oh, fishing with the big bait. No, he's a bigger one. Let's get him in there. I can see the hooks on the outside. The downside is you get fish this size on sardine, they'll take it, but you might miss them on the strike. But I'm pulling back. Mike's got two on the sprat, sardines come back with one. Well, nearly one. I'll count it till it's in the net. Easy, easy. Yeah, that's a bit bigger. That's a bit bigger. Maybe we should go for total weight rather than numbers. I don't want to get embarrassed by Michael beating me first time out. There we go. That shows you the sardine works. Big old parallels at the end. You can see all that tail power, dorsal, right at the back, the tail, bottom fin. That's so they can launch themselves with the bait. And this one certainly did a good bit of launching. Let's get it back. I can feel I'm coming back strong in this match. Gone. I've got another fish on. We just moved. Oh, we just. We just moved literally downstream a bit and we're doing what's called leapfrogging. Oh, yeah, that's not a bad one. This is a bigger fish. This is big. It's not a jack pike. Oh, don't come off. He's on the surface. He looks like a six pounder ish. He's down there. Yeah, we'd only moved down at about four cast mics below me. Right on the inside. Here he comes. He's about six pounds, I guess. You can see that, that hook there. 
Just hang in there. All right. Oh! One of the problems you're always going to get is that loose hook at the back. Come on. I'll try and get him straight up on the on the mat straight away. Oh, that's a nice fish, that one. That's okay. That's put me back in the race. Okay, so what I've got there is you can see, look, this other hook's caught in the net, but we're using these singles like this, straight out like that. No problem. There's the fish. Yes, please. Thank you very much. Two, two, sardines and sprats at the moment are equal. I feel there's a bigger one coming. There's something about fishing for river pie that sets my pulse racing. Get the clarity conditions right and I just can't stop twitching. Well, my baits, of course. And on the Dorset Stour, every cast I make is filled with hope. Straight away, next cast, call that fish. This got nailed straight away on a small sardine. Check me drag. See if we get lucky. Yep, we're on. Same swim, same swim. I don't know the size of the fish. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, good scrappers, good scrappers. These river pike, you cannot beat them, I'm sorry. They just fight harder than lake pike. And this one, I think, might be over six pounds or so we haven't seen it we haven't seen it it's going well oh, i hate losing a fish you don't see no same size it was really scrappy it was all suddenly kicking off pike after pike from the same area of overhangs right guys we've had seven pike so far i have i had those two Graham's had about five. Um, we had two in a swim, a shallow swim just up there. And uh, I just come to this one here and I've got a much better sized pike for me here. Just under that overhang over there. Great take. I wound up to it slowly because I thought, initially I thought it was a snag, so I wound up to it slowly, felt a tiny little tap and I had to hit it. Energy. There he comes. Nope. Whoa, he's off again. He's in. Number eight is toast. Nice fish, too. Let's get him on the mat and get him on the hook. Falling out, that's convenient. Yeah. Seven pounds, I would guess. Uh, Alright, let's get him back. Look at that, lovely colours. See the markings? We cover him. He's Beautiful. off. Well, guys, we came down here. I've got to take, I've had to climb around the tree. It's the only way I could get to strike the fish if it's even still on. I don't even know if it's still on. He might have dropped it. No, I'm on. I'm on upside down on the tree. <laughs> I don't think I've turned on that one. <laughs> no. How am I going to fight a fish upside down a tree? This is the first time I've ever done this. Let's have a look. Oh, yeah, it's not bad fish. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> if he pulls me out the tree, what am I going to do? Oh! Oh! Sorry, nurse. <laughs> He's got to get around this side of him. He's on the surface. Now, I've got up here to hook it up. I'm certainly not jumping down like I've seen in other films. This is a river, not a lake. Let's see if we can get this fish down now. It's going to go again in a second. Oh! Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Ma, I'm going to 
Right, the net's been procured by my bailiff and Gilly and placed carefully in the bloody brambles. What a place, what a fish is. fish is still going nuts. Oh, he jumped in the net. As a result, there is a result. You can get the best from any river by being mobile and constantly on the move. A backpack, a basic tackle of food, a bag of bait, and good rubber on your wellies because you are going to do some serious walking. We can cover a couple of miles of river searching out the best swims. Use polarizing glasses to search out the weed beds and drop offs and look for any feature or hidey hole that might hold our freshwater predator, the pike. We changed over, gone to Sprat. Mike's on sardine now, but the Sprats are starting to pick up. There's no question the Sprat is better. We had a real dead spot and now we've got fish again. Fish looks about six pounds. Do you see him? Well, he was. He got, oh! <laughs> he came off! But you guys saw it. Totally awesome fishing. Jumping pike. Guys, I just had a take. <laughs> I couldn't resist growing up another tree. There's no way you can fish this swim except up the tree. And I've been down here many times before. He's still got it. We actually saw him come up and take it. I'm going to try it. Ow. <laughs> oh, it's a nice fish. It's a nice pike. Oh my god, it's a nice one. Look at the size of that. Oh my god, I'm right on the edge of the fast water. I said to Michael, that is exactly where I'd be if I was a pike laying on the edge of the fast water. And he's in it. He's right in the fast water. Tell you what, this is not a bad fish. I'm going to watch the drag. I've got no. Oh, it's a good fish. That's a good fish. I would never have been able to fish this swim if I hadn't got up the tree and dropped it straight down. Got to keep it fairly short here. Don't have a lot of space to manoeuvre. We might get lucky. Tell you what, that fish is eight, nine pounds, I think. He is on the surface. I'll try to keep him on the surface if I can. No, I can't. It's too strong. Don't try this at home, especially as a non swimmer. I'm over a nice. There he is. There he is. There he is. Now that's a nice. That's a nice pike. That is a nice little pike. What a trip. What a trip we've had. This is. Wait for this. Number fifteen. That's number fifteen there. Tell you what, ladies, he's very close to my double. Very close. I'd say that's just going to shade it. Let's get him up on the bank. Oh. I'm exhausted. Oh. 
<laughs> I'm going to show you this one before I wake up from dreaming. That is a beauty. Under the trees, in a hole. I guess it goes about 12 plus, something like that. Let's get the hooks out, guys. 15 pike. This fish not far off, 12 to 14. Caught out of a tree. The second one I caught out of a tree. Let's get it back. He gave me a great scrap, but I was lucky to get it. Beautiful fish. Disprats work. Tell you what, I don't think I'll be using sardines for a while. Using twitch dead baits is a killing method. The pike just can't help themselves. But you have to get it right. Too slow, and you snag the bottom. Too fast, and you're up near the surface with the bait. If I had to pick an optimum depth, it would probably be about, say, two feet below the surface. And if the bait spins in the current, you have it rigged incorrectly. Make sure the dead bait lies perfectly straight. Right guys, it's about 4.30 now. We're right on packing up time. Gave it the totally awesome five minute warning. Dad just said, I reckon, I reckon cast down by that tree. I reckon there's a pike there. First cast, last sprat. We've used all our sprats and he absolutely nailed it. Couldn't get the bail arm open quick enough. He steamed under the tree. Gave him about five, six seconds. Had to hit him quite hard twice. And luckily yeah, he's, about he's five, hooked. Four, four pounder. Not a massive one, but my fifth of the day, we're on 17. In one day, and we've done two, two packets of sprats. Total cost two pounds. Yeah. So between sardines or sprats, I think I'm gonna go for the sprats. Oh, it's not a bad one. Yeah. That's it, slack it off and then you can stretch out. Hey. It's in. Let's get him on the mat. Right guys, there we go. About five pounds, 17 pike. Most of which were on the Sprat. We've given it the five minute warning. We've got to get back now. Well, we have to, because we're out of Sprats. No, lovely looking pike here. I'm happy with it. My first time properly pike fishing. You don't have to be an expert to pike fish. You just got to know the method. Twitching sprats. It's deadly. Let's cool. get him back. Yeah.